the 20th century was indeed a time when the Russian ballet attained worldwide fame. That was a period when Russian choreographers, ballerinas and dancers scored fantastic success. Anna Pavlova, Václav Nizhinsky, Tamara Karsavina and Mikhail Fokin. Their names became a symbol of Russian ballet at the turn of the century. Reality and legend dovetail closely in reminiscences about their art. The dying swan that was directed by Mikhail Fokin for Anna Pavlova was a manifestation of the immortal power of beauty. In the middle of the century, the dying swan was associated with the sad and trembling dance of Galina Ulanova. In her performance, the ballet miniature was worn by lyricism and gentleness. In the 60s and 70s, another great Russian ballerina, Maya Plisetskaya, created her image of the swan, a regal bird floating over the smooth surface of water.
The reformer of the Bolshoi theater was Alexander Gorsky. Kasyan Golizovsky was a bold experimentalist. By his daring innovations, he involved the young ballet dancers and influenced many choreographers of the world. Viktorina Krieger, as a true Moscovite, trespassed the academic forms of dance, went her own way, which prompted ridicule and displeasure of the defenders of tradition. This is a rare recording of Asaf Messerer's dance with his sister Sulamifi. By their outward appearance, by their love for the complexity of dance techniques, by the manner of their performance, they suited each other, they felt each other, and understood each other. A graduate of the Moscow Ballet School, Asaf Messerer was the first to begin reforming men's dances complicating techniques and combining virtuosity with acting. In this truly rare excerpt from the first Soviet ballet on a contemporary theme, Red Poppy, Asaf Messerer appears in the dance with a ribbon. The sports elements and the art of the dancer considerably expanded the framework of tradition and enabled him to become an experimentalist artist. the debut of 16-year-old Marina Simeonova of the Leningrad Ballet School passed into oblivion all the talk about the inviolability of classical ballet in Soviet art. Simeonova's dance became the standard of harmony in man's life. And her Odette in Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake represented a powerful and fearless bird struggling for a wholesome and heroic life. changed. Ideals in life and on the stage also changed. In Russia, which was closed to the influence of the outside world, the dynamics of life, its rapid development, were manifest in the democratic and radiant dance of Olga Lepeshinskaya and Pyotr Gusev. What is truly astounding, that it was precisely in the period of the brilliant successes in our ballet, its dynamics, its sportive and energetic elements, that we witnessed the quiet and concentrated art of Galina Ulanova, a world legend of the 20th century. Her young years coincided with the emergence of new genres in Russian ballet, with the manifestations of the best works of world literature, Shakespeare, Pushkin on the stage with searches for actors' expression 
and the lessons of Konstantin Stanislavski on the ballet stage. Ulanova's great lyrical gift unfolded in her first appearances on the stage of the famous Chopiniana by Mikhail Fokin. At the time of bombastic and heroic interpretations of Russia's performing school, Ulanova danced the quiet sorrow of a captive queen awaiting a loving soul. Young Siegfried, who was depicted and played so poetically by Konstantin Sergeyev, reflected the same exhaustion of life as the young swan, Galina Ulanova. The Fountain of Bachi Sarai, based on Pushkin's poem, was the first stage performance of Soviet choreography. And this was the time the first ballet in which Ulanova displayed her most heartfelt theme of her inner spiritual strength that could not be broken by violence. of semi-movement, the hint of gesture to express the essence of the action, made Ulanova a great psychological actress of her time. <laughs> 